Good evening. Welcome to the Eastern Area Green Table Talk, Education Across the Miles, Mission Possible. This Green Table Talk discussion will be recorded and streamed live to the Eastern Area Facebook page. Good evening, and welcome to the green table of the Eastern area of the Lynx Incorporated. Our green table is symbolic of our own childhood kitchen tables, that special place where mothers, aunties, mimis, and friends gathered to strategize and hold important conversations. I am Rhonda Starks Crowder, Eastern Area Program Coordinator, and tonight our conversation is singularly focused on Monrovia, Liberia, the schools we support there, and the educational mission we've made possible. When we gathered last year, we petitioned your assistance so our students in Africa would know help was on the way. Today, we can confidently share we've answered the call. It was a trilogy of sorts. Act one, aid was needed. Act two, aid arrived. And now we're seeking your assistance in determining and defining our act three. Tonight, we show off our success. We brag just a little bit, it's allowed tonight, on what we've achieved, and we take you on a journey of how we got there. And along the way, we hope to inspire you to pull out your virtual passports and perhaps your checkbooks and join us for this third leg of this life-changing mission. But first, let's take care of just a few housekeeping matters. The chat feature is enabled to allow sharing of information. However, if you have a question, please post those questions in the Q&A box. We will definitely try to address as many questions as we can over the course of our time together. We have a full house tonight with friends and family joining from all four areas and from across the miles. This evening's Green Table Talk was made possible by our director, Dr. Shawana Tucker Sims, whose support of education across the miles, linking with West Africa has been unwavering. Madam Director, we thank you for your commitment to our mission. With your continued support, all things are possible. We wish to acknowledge our national president, Dr. Kimberly Jeffries Leonard, our 13th national president, Gladys Gary Vaughn, and our 16th national president, Dr. Glenda Newell Harris, for linking with us this evening. We also extend sisterly greetings to our 15th national president, Margot James Copeland. She could not join us this evening, but her spirit is very much a part of this evening's conversation for it was during her administration in 2010 that four schools were established in Liberia and two maternal waiting homes. We recognize other national officers elected and appointed, including our national vice president, attorney Ethel Isaacs Williams, and our national treasurer, Ethlyn E. Bowers, who are in the room this evening. 
Your presence is a familiar and welcome comfort. National Program Director Pamela Freeman Fobbs, National Committee Chairs and Members, thank you for being with us as well. And we want to send a special shout out to all past Eastern Area Directors and all members of the Eastern Area Leadership Team, including Eastern Area International Trends and Services FACET Chair, Dr. Cynthia Jacobs Carter, and Co Chair, Dr. Constance Moss, both of whom you will hear from a little later in our program. To our special invited guests from the private and public sectors, our esteemed constituents joining from Monrovia, Liberia, to our donors, sponsors, partners, collaborators, Facebook Live viewers, sister friends and service from across LinkedIn, and of course, our beloved connecting links. Good evening and welcome. Now that all humans have been welcomed and all are gathered around our table, let's get this conversation started. Friends, if you were with us last year, I don't have to explain or remind that you are in for an experience. If you are joining us for the first time, get ready, get ready, get ready. We are so thankful because our project sponsors are here and yes, sponsors, plural. It is my privilege to introduce to some and reintroduce to most the 11th National President of the Lynx Incorporated, Attorney Patricia Russell McLeod. She is a woman of multiple titles, supervisor of the 14th Episcopal District, a nationally recognized orator, a mentor to many, and I believe her count is up to 146, but don't ask me how I know that fun fact. And she has been known to wear some fabulous Zoom blocking hats. Some have called her the warden, where she holds the keys to over 300 cities. Tonight, though, we receive her as attorney Pat. And she is joined this evening by her partner in life, labor, and love, Connecting Link AME Bishop E. Earl McLeod Jr. Bishop McLeod is currently the presiding bishop of the AME Church in the 14th Episcopal District in Nigeria, Ghana, Sierra Leone, Togo, Bien, Liberia, and the Ivory Coast, and the 19th Episcopal District in the Republic of South Africa. He's a native of Alabama and an alum of Tuskegee Institute. Bishop McLeod holds a doctorate of ministry degree from the United Theological Seminary. And in 2004, he became the 127th elected and consecrated bishop in the history of the AME Church. Eastern family and friends, please give Attorney Pat and Bishop McLeod a warm welcome. Welcome back, Attorney Pat, and welcome, Bishop. So we know this isn't the first time you've been in our virtual company, Bishop, but I do know this is the first time at our green table. So we extend both hands of friendships to you and know that if our table is set, you have a very special seat. I know our time together this evening is limited, so without further formality, let's get this conversation started. Our friends have watched a short trailer. It was a sobering, yet uplifting reminder of the hope and purpose that comes when teamwork makes the dream work. Our friends saw the learning and living conditions surrounding our schools in Monrovia. And it was a clear rally cry for our sisters and friends. We witnessed the barren laboratories and bare minimum classrooms. The unmistakable voice at the end was yours, Attorney Pat, assuring students that help was on the way. And I quote, help was on the way. So our evening's trilogy begins here, aid needed. Bishop McLeod, I look to you. Please explain your relationship and Attorney Pat's relationship with our schools in Liberia. And then tell us a little bit about the schools. I know we're gonna learn more as we go along this evening, but tell us just a little bit about the schools and the current situation in Liberia in general. Everybody. Um, Monrovia College and AME University are sister schools. Monrovia College actually is an industrial and training high school that began 99 years ago, and it goes from grade 10, 11, and 12. AME University is about 26 years old, and many of the students from Monrovia College enroll in AME University. The International Monetary Fund 
classifies Liberia as the third poorest country in the world. The exchange rate, for example, of a US dollar, one US dollar is 172 Liberian liberties. So the people are much are not much like America. The opportunities are not the same. The roads are not the same. For educational purposes, the opportunities are not the same. This became important to me when I was stuck in an airport in Johannesburg and bought Nelson Mandela's book autobiography. And he talked about in there for Africans, it was not a lack of ability, it was lack of opportunity. So we wanted to be guilty of helping to provide opportunity. And uh, I want to be, I'm grateful that the Eastern Area Links, under the leadership of, of uh, Director Tucker Sims, T Tucker Sims, I I'm grateful that you all are lending your hands to help us provide this opportunity. Students now, because of what you've already done, students now have uh, science dish trays and they have skeletons of bodies and they have, they can do experiments with slide, real slides and the microscope that you saw on the screen was one that I hand carried uh, to Liberia from, from Atlanta that was donated to us by a lady from Florida. So we're grateful for what you've done. These are great schools and they're gonna be better because of you. Hey, thank you, thank you, Bishop. And Attorney Pat, I want to probe just a little um, more about uh, why you have uh, called Monrovia a distant and difficult geographical location and I would like for you to help us understand how these coordinates correlate to student outcomes. Thank you. Uh, Link Rhonda, it has made a difference in my travels to just hop on a plane and get to work. When I go to work in Liberia, which may be in non-COVID times quarterly for weeks at a time, it's distant because usually in America or even uh, companion island areas where I work, it's quicker. So when you get on a flight and it's 5,000 miles from New York and then you have, you can't land in Monrovia, you land in Ghana and then or if you're coming that way, you go to Ghana, then Monrovia, Liberia. So it's distant. And then if you leave Ghana and go to Monrovia, there is a night and day difference. And the imbalance of spirit and buy-in and ownership and beauty and wonder and excitement uh, dissipates because all of the, uh, the reality check is so diverse that you think you have been through a, a difficult tunnel of difference because Ghana is alive and well, uh, thriving, and Monrovia is poor, rural, uh, crowded, and striving. And the hope almost evaporates but it's renewed with the thirst of the people to meet you, to greet you, to learn from you, to exchange cultures and attitudes and behaviors. And there's a curiosity about America. So that's my descriptor of, of how it is, but my excitement in every African country comes particularly with young people. And so when you talk with the youth, there's an eagerness about America and Western learning and teaching. So the desired outcome is to undergird them with the knowledge that they thirst for. And that's why I was encouraged beyond measure to see 
that I could actually codify it on paper, submit it to a visionary leader in Shawana Tucker Sims for consideration for her board, her program coordinator and team to say, voila, this is an opportunity to educate across the miles in a mission that really could be possible if we got behind it. I've not seen in 45 years of my matriculation, uh, contribution, activation in LinkedIn, an area to take on an international project program initiative of this with breath, girth, and legacy. Wow, well, the Eastern area definitely stepped up. Um, and we're going to see uh, just in what fashion uh, very shortly. You both have certainly set the stage for the second part of our trilogy, uh, Help Arrived. It seemed a lifetime ago that we were at this virtual table. So much has happened. The world continues to grapple with this insidious uh, and persistent virus. We've had an insurrection and thank God uh, almighty daily that we've also witnessed a changing of the guard uh, due to an inauguration. Uh, but it was a year ago, February 24th, 2020 to be exact. And upon your invitation, Attorney Pat, we chartered our course and invited the Eastern area to grab their virtual passports and join us on the first leg of our mission. And I wanna say to all of our friends who've joined us, you gave consent by donating a record breaking amount of money, $16,000 in 14 minutes. And we remain eternally grateful. But unfortunately, some of that magic of the moment was dampened less than a few weeks later by a global health pandemic that we now recognize as COVID-19, which paralyzed the world. So if it paralyzed the US, I can only imagine the impact it had on Liberia. But we know it did not throughout our mission or our focus, but we know delayed is not denied. We press forward because that is what we do in the Eastern area. So friends, buckle your seatbelts and let's take another quick trip back across the miles, remembering how it was going then and reveling in how it's going now. Watch and listen closely. Gentlemen, this is your CEO, Cyrus Glashu from Iberian Shipping Line. Currently in 2021, but there's some very special, uh, important people that I want to mention here today. One of them are uh, Randa Crada, very interesting lady. Uh, I've not physically seen her, but within uh, networking uh, through social media and uh, email, stuff like that. You know what makes that lady very special? It's what she did in Liberia through her effort, through the bishop, the entire organization, but she stared at the whole thing to make that up, uh, operation almost successful. And I'm talking about the uh, laboratory um, at the AME University on Camp Johnson Road. Far, what we got for you. Uh, this is right on the cart, so we're loading up our truck and uh, for the side of the shipment. So, just to keep you posted.
here this morning to visit Morgan College to see what's happening there. And I will see that the building has been renovated and new equipment have been brought into the school. Basically, to aid your learning. We want to really thank all of you and your parents for having trust in us that you trusted your education into our own care. Basically, the AME Church, because it's an AME school. And I want to also thank the leadership of Bishop McLeod and Supervisor McLeod, who, through their contacts, their instrumentalities, today are presenting several lab equipments to all of you students to help you to learn and learn better. All right? These first equipments were donated to us by Links Incorporated in the United States. Mm -hmm. Bishop McLeod and his wife. And since the brothers have received custody of them, and we had to wait for them to build the lab for you before the boxes will be opened, and then the equipment will be presented to you, for you. Unacceptable that you will be in high school you're learning science and you don't have an opportunity to go to the laboratory and do science work on your own. There are many schools who have not even seen, the students have not even seen some equipment. But then you have now the opportunity, you're so fortunate, so blessed, that now you will not only sit in the classroom, you have an opportunity to come to the lab and then you will do some practical work by yourself. That will make the learning of science even more interesting and even better for every one of you. Uh, I don't know the name of all of them. All right? What are the last ones here? Okay, the last one students here. Yeah. Cyrus. You know which one is this? That's a microscope. And let me say on behalf of my faculty and the students, we are grateful once more to the leadership of the full team. Bishop Makla and Supervisor Makla and to the Dean's Incorporated Family for this uh, donation. This will be used for our students. This lab will be equipped and will be several to none in the Republic of Nigeria. I'm Jacqueline Shax. We are wholeheartedly grateful for this opportunity given unto us. We are so, so grateful as students because honestly, not every school provides this opportunity for their students, not just any student, but the ones that are leaving the walls of their school. So we want to say thank you, and we promise you this means of learning given to us will be used massively and will make the best out of it. Thanks a whole lot to the 14th District. Thank you. I want to thank Ms. Gamble, Ms. Fatman Gamble, for this kind donation and uh, just to ensure that it had reached to you, because it was meant for me. We appreciate the Fortune Festival of Kushke, our Bishop of my club and his wife. We say thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to learn the advance our learning opportunity. We say thank you. Let God bless you, Bishke, and she's listening. We won't talk about it. Eastern area will be about it. My friends, help has arrived in Monrovia. Let me be more specific. The Eastern area has arrived. We stepped up. 
10,000 masks provided by AME Church in the Eastern area. Speakers, laptops, flasks, scales, microscopes. You saw them being lifted from the boxes. Four brand new STEM labs, two at Monrovia College in final stages of construction, two at AME University, chemistry, biology, computer, computer lab, physics, you have seen the students. Most importantly, you've heard their heartfelt testimonies of what these precious gifts mean to them. Patricia McLeod, Bishop McLeod, Madam Director, this is the first time you're seeing the video. I know how I felt when I curated the videos and I saw Rhonda C. Link, those boxes being moved from, you can follow the boxes from the US to Liberia, to the hands of the students, literally a, a live unboxing ceremony. Share with us, I want your raw reaction. How do you feel after watching the video? And friends in the audience, share with us in one word how you feel after watching the video. You can drop that in the chat. Attorney I feel Pat. Grateful. I feel grateful. I feel humbled. I don't have a one word. I have the many, many adjectives because I know what it wasn't. And when I saw those laboratories, when I saw white computers, when I saw students opening boxes and skeletal uh, wonder is coming out, that was a, a pale chart on a wall that was probably as old as I am. And these boxes made my heart say, thank you, God for a visionary Eastern area and leadership that cared enough to reach across the miles. Uh, Madam, Madam Director, I wanna tell you how the children feel. I wanna tell you that what you have done with the ladies in the Lynx Incorporated is provided an opportunity that Booker T. Washington talked about years ago at the beginning of Tuskegee Institute when he lifted the veil of ignorance from the heads of a black man that's right in the middle of the campus now. These children can't touch you. They can't hug you. They can't, they can't wet your clothes with their tears, but if you were there, they would. So now you, your, your ladies have helped us provide an opportunity. These children will be the people who discover the cures for cancer. They will be the, and really there are five labs instead of four because there were so many computers that were donated that we actually put 20 of them in a, in a lab at AME University. Uh, that Ms. Gamble provided. So we, we are grateful. When I arrived there, we found chairs on concrete floors and broken windows. Not one single microscope, not one test tube, not one lab dish, nothing. And now, in the tradition of Richard Allen, the founder of the AME Church, if you can educate our minds, you have us. Nobody can take it away. And I'm thanking you for giving these children something that nobody can ever take away from them. Bishop, thank you so much for those words and also to link Pat to everyone. I am, I'm feeling overwhelmed but my word is thankful. I am so thankful that we had this conversation well over a year ago and you expressed to us the need in Liberia. And for me, pulling my team together and working closely with my chairs and with Link Rhonda to say, how can we make a difference? What can we do? Mapping out a plan uh, and all of the behind the scenes work that went into this sitting there and, and ordering one item at a time, beaker, a microscope, 
And then like Rhonda working with the shipping company because we know that there were concerns. Many of our sisters said, well, if we donate, how will our items get there? We said, don't worry about it. We're gonna handle it and take care of it. And I am especially grateful and thankful to our Eastern area sisters who stepped up, who believed in us, who believed in the work and the difference that we could make. And they donated their funds so that we could purchase the items to equip the labs to make a difference in the lives of our students. So I thank everyone that has joined us this evening. Because of you, you have made this all possible. And so I say, thank you. Thank you. So Attorney Pat, you are a 45 year plus seasoned link, a past national president, You've been the face and the voice and an advocate for communities in the motherland for decades. In your observation, what are some of the key elements or some may call them best practices, those on the program team know I call it the secret sauce. Tell us what is the secret sauce that made this mission discernibly different? The secret sauce comes with working together works. And this moment is the one we've been waiting for because that secret sauce is first enriched with the ingredient of leadership supporting leaders with vision. So I celebrate the international president of the Lynx Incorporated 17th in fact, I celebrate the reality check that comes with the member-centric attorney Ethel uh, Isaacs Williams and, and uh, our president, Kim Jeffries Leonard, they make the difference for that opening that comes with allowing creativity and the contribution. I celebrate a global-minded director who said it's not robbery for us to be an integral part of the possible completion. I celebrate 24 seven iconic Eastern area program coordinator, Rhonda Starks Crowder, because it takes all of that to get the root of the secret sauce. So the amazing Eastern area sister links and a program team that dared to the conscientious donors, large and small donations that gave us the treasure from the heart, blessing the legacy that students would have otherwise been denied. I am thankful for the prayer warriors and the praise celebrants, because when you do an international program, it's more than a notion. It's complex. It requires comprehensive collaborative efforts. And Maya Angelou said it this way, people will forget what you said. They will forget what you did, but they will never forget how you made them feel. So here's news that you can use. Education across the miles, did you know? that Africa holds nearly 17% of the world's population, its science and technology, engineering and math are lacking. So how could that be, you ask? So glad you asked. Now, historically, Africa has been lacking across the fabric of the continent. But in Monrovia, we have a weak infrastructure and weak governance. We have lack of materials and lack of uh, staff in shortages that impact our ability to ensure that consistency that is required. The electricity and the water supply are compromised and the internet is tentative. So somebody said it couldn't be done, but Nelson Mandela said it always seems impossible until it gets done. STEAM education and economic performance really ties to global competitiveness and STEM careers and wealth. Did you know, while others are workforce focused on the fact that the people are aging, 
Africa has 60% of their population is currently under the age of 25. So know this, STEM literacy, STEM careers and jobs will be the future and the global print for Africa, for wealth. So the undersecretary of the UN put it this way. She said, Africa must close its gender gap in order to succeed. So we expect the well-educated in 50 years, it's going to take that long to turn that wheel, but this is our mission possible of that beginning. This, they said it couldn't be done. But what the links have done has been augmented by what? A partnership based on what they see that you've done with Tennessee State University. Visionary President Dr. Glenda Glover will implement with AME University and Monrovia College coding. Coding because they said it couldn't be done, but you did it. You did it. Inquiring minds want to know, how did the Eastern area, 78 chapters of the Lynx Incorporated, Connecticut, Delaware, District of Columbia, Maryland, Massachusetts, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, and Virginia, how did you do it? When you are in part one, you're leaning in to the finish line. How did you finalize and complete when it's an international program facet and Liberia is 45 100 miles away, how did you equip four labs with flask and beakers and microscopes and test tubes, Bunsen burners and alcohol burners and syringes and stethoscopes and thermometers and barometers and speedometers and protractors? And although the list is endless, my time is not, so I'll just say et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Education, Nelson Mandela said, is the engine of personal development. It means that a daughter of a peasant can become a doctor. Education, he said, means that the son of a mine worker can become the head of the mine. And he said that a child of a farm worker can become the president of a country. And his name is Nelson Mandela. Think about it. I was speaking at the University of Maryland Eastern Shore and when I arrived, I was escorted by a 17 year old who proudly told me I'm a Marhoff scholar and I'm a microbiologist. I said, you're a microbiologist? She said, I will be, I will be. And so isn't it interesting that now from a Meyerhoff scholar who was 17, not the same child, but a 17 year old at the same university. And her name is what? Dr. Kismeta Corbett, who did what? Discovered the what lead team on the Moderna platform. Speaking of STEM and impact, she is not a hidden figure because we're waiting and Dr. Fauci says very clearly, it's an African-American woman whose shot is going in your arm. So think about your contribution. Why not Africa? Why not Africa? It's a secret sauce. So what is in the ingredient? What is the element, Miss Rhonda? A success model in partnership. There are no big eyes and little U's. There's a big reveal. The secret sauce means that the elements and practices and the processes are link specific and AME specific. Working together works. And you've reached beyond the geographical miles and you've sharpened the saw. What? Humility. It's a part of the secret sauce. Know this. You simply don't know it all. And if you determine that you're the smartest in the room, then prepare to change rooms. 
because you have to ignite the passion to connect to the purpose. English is the first language in Liberia, praise the Lord. But guess what? The West Africans speak three to four language proficiencies. And so it's the Westerner who's lacking. So don't think you're working with those who don't have high intellectual capacity. And that was the secret sauce because this committee was willing to check its ego at the door with flexibility. They were not the problem identifiers, they were the problem solvers and they unleashed their networks of influence. Secret sauce, a needs assessment. If you don't know, you need to ask somebody. You need to ask somebody. African proverb says this, not to know is bad. Not to wish to know is worse. Do yourself a favor. Do not assume that you know what Africans need. Africans know what Africans need and they can tell you. And if you don't know, ask somebody. Thirdly, have a supply chain. Have a comparable supply chain to your what? Competence, your value proposition. Every box sorted, counted, photographed, inventoried, and delivered. Good news report, not one box, not one item was damaged, destroyed, lost, stolen, not one. No, not one should be a song. No not one. Think, question, design, create, collaborate, struggle, solve, invent, reflect, and learn. It's the secret sauce. Finally, a dedicated team or individual is what you're going to have to have. And you had it in the Eastern area. It's analogous to preparing a gourmet meal. You must have the right people dedicated and dutiful. This is not a resume builder. This is not an aspirational hope and desire. It is not a professional aspiration. This is life saving. This is life altering. This is legacy. So it means that if you give of your time, your talent, and your treasure, it means that you are human being. And you understand that but for the grace of God, but for the grace of God, you could have been marginalized you could have been educationally restricted. You could have had the ability, just like our children in Monrovia College, but not the opportunity. So what's our investment and why? Bishop McLeod and I made a decision two years ago that we were going to educate eight children at AME University. And we had four young men from Togo Benin and four young women from Sierra Leone. And it is true that it's better to have a degree and not need it than to need it and not have it. So they said it couldn't be done. President Mandela said, it always seems impossible until it gets done. So to dream the impossible dream, to right the unrightable wrong, that is our quest, to follow that star, no matter how hopeless, no matter how far, the world will be better at one area of links, scorned and covered with scars, still strove with that last ounce of courage to reach that unreachable stop. Education across the miles, 
mission possible. And that is the secret sauce. Okay, I hope everyone was taking notes because I sure was. And I was in the kitchen when she was co concocting the secret sauce. So attorney Pat, once again, uh, you bought the rain and the thunder. That's what the kids say these days anyway. So thank you for sharing the secret sauce. We do need to probe you just a little more. There was a few things that you said that I actually had to give pause to. And, and that was regarding the supply chain because you know how complex the supply chain was for this project. And I know how complex it was, but I want our audience to have a better sense for that because it was one of the key ingredients to the secret sauce. So my sisters, Amazon Prime does not deliver to Monrovia, Liberia, and FedEx does not offer overnight delivery to the Monrovia. Trust me, I tried. Attorney Pat got it right when she said Monrovia is a distant and difficult geography this supply chain was complex and complicated. And yes, I have received text as to how it was done. So I'm going to give you the cliff note version, five steps. Vendors were vetted for product specification, availability and price. We reconciled, we reconciled, we reconciled. Orders from all over the US were sent directly to our shipper whom you met in the video, CEO Cyrus Barshu. He is located in Rhode Island. Upon delivery of every parcel, box, and envelope, my name was written and you saw my name, Rhonda C. Links on every single item. Communications were crucial. Every box that arrived at his US warehouse, I received a text and completed another round of reconciliations to ensure all orders placed were delivered. Orders were then consolidated to ensure we got the best rates you saw that in the video. They were loaded onto a container and water bound from Monrovia. Once offloaded and placed in Cyrus's secure warehouse in Liberia, I received another text and more communications went out to both our program sponsors as well as our field crew in Liberia. The ground crew in Liberia were notified of the number of boxes awaiting pickup from the warehouse in Liberia and they were retrieved and delivered to a secured location near the schools. And that my friends is the cliff note version of our supply chain. You could literally follow those boxes in the video. So from the time orders were placed, packages shipped to Rhode Island and to the time the packages were offloaded to our warehouse in Liberia, average 10 to 16 weeks. So if you are mentally project mapping, this translates to every month for the past 12 months, there has been activity supporting this mission. So I want our audience to know that our shipper was, oh, he, he, had, he was conscientious, he, he uh, showed fidelity, and we can never pay him what he's really worth, but we can honor him with a gift box that he does not have to write my name on and he gets to keep. So as a token of, pre of appreciation on behalf of the Eastern area, we are sending CEO Cyrus Barshu a gift box on behalf of the Eastern area. And to Cyrus, I know he is listening out there. I say to you, my brother, rest up. Iceman, that is the Liberian warehouse supervisor. Rest up and get ready, get ready, get ready. Because mission two is on the way. So friends, we've shared our behind the scenes production. Attorney Pat has given you for free our winning recipe for success. But we know the key ingredient that enables any success in any project, in any program, in any initiative is you, members of the Eastern area and friends. And through your generosity, we have advanced students one giant step further in their pursuit of excellence. So at this time, I am passing the virtual mic to our director, Dr. Shawana Tucker-Sims, to Eastern Area ITS FACET Chair, Dr. Cynthia Jacobs-Carter, and Co-Chair, Dr. Constance Moss, who will acknowledge all of our outstanding donors. Thank you, Link Rhonda. I have been anxiously but patiently awaiting this opportunity 
to salute you, my sisters and friends of the Eastern area for your generous contributions to our mission, education across the miles. Together, we raised $38,246.14 in cash and $4,330 via in-kind donations for a grand total of $42,576.14. You've made the impossible possible. And it is now my honor to recognize our donors. There are five giving levels. The Humanitarian Society, up to $249. The Wall of Appreciation, $250 to $499. The Hall of Fame, $500 to $999. The White Rose, $1,000 to $1,999 and the Emerald Society, members and chapters who donated 2,000 or more dollars. First to present is Dr. Cynthia Jacobs Carter, our Eastern Area International Trends and Services Chair, who will be followed by Dr. Constance Moss, Eastern Area International Trends and Services Co-Chair. Dr. Jacobs Carter. Thank you, Adam Shuana. Greetings, my sisters and friends. You've heard this before and I'll say it again. It was Nelson Mandela who once said, it was not a lack of ability that limited my people, but lack of opportunity. Because of you, the lack of, the abil of ability had been limiting the people, but now the chapters have made quite a difference. Thank you, sister members. New opportunities have been afforded to our young sisters and brothers uh, in Liberia. They have been systematically locked out of global economies and opportunities, but because of you, this is all changing now. It has changed. This evening, we recognize the following Humanitarian Society honorees. There you see it there, Bucks County, Pennsylvania, Danville, Virginia, Mount Rose, Virginia, Silver Spring, Maryland, Westchester County, New York. All of our chapters stated here, we thank you. So the following humanitarian honorees, here are their names. Let me just mention that Ms. Teresa Knox of Wilmington, Delaware was the first to give a gift by PayPal. That's what kicked us off. Now, we thank you. Delrita Abercrombie, Sherry Amado, Maureen Olivia Baxter, Lorena Marshall Blake, Myrtle Booker, Karima Bushavnafa, Dr. Cynthia Jacobs Carter and Carl Wayne Carter Jr. Karen Clifford, Cedric Brown Collections, LLC. Rhonda Starks Crowder, Cynthia Gresham, Teresa F. Knox, Dr. Anjanette Ferris Sinatus, and Melva Ware. So now my co-chair, Dr. Constance Moss will present the next category. Thank you. Good evening. I am Dr. Constance Moss, Eastern Area ITS Facet Co-Chair. 
the beautiful thing about learning is that no one can take it away from you. That is a quote from B.B. King. We thank the following wall of appreciation donors for enabling the priceless gift of lifelong learning to our students across the miles. The chapters include Chesapeake, Virginia Beach, Virginia chapter, Dover, Delaware chapter, Farmington Valley, Connecticut chapter, Morris County, New Jersey chapter, Newport News, Virginia chapter, Princess Anne, Maryland chapter, Reston, Virginia chapter, Waterbury, Waterbury, Connecticut chapter. Blanche L. Jackson, Blanche Jackson of the Dover chapter was the first to provide an in-kind donation. And Nada Johnson, thank you very much. Next we have the Hall of Fame. The Hall of Fame acknowledges those individuals who have given $500 to $999. It is my great honor to recognize these all time greats. Albany, New York chapter, Baltimore, Maryland chapter, Brooklyn, New York chapter, Delaware Valley, Pennsylvania chapter, Eastern Shore, New York chapter, Fairfield County, Connecticut chapter, Greater Providence, Rhode Island chapter, Hampton, Virginia chapter, Long Island, New York chapter, Milford, Delaware, sorry, Milford, Connecticut chapter, Rochester, New York chapter. In addition, Alice Chapman, Manetello, Dr. Joan F. Coker, Andrea Corpini, Dr. Velma Scantlebury, Ann Taylor, and Dr. Shawana Tucker Sims. We thank you, the Hall of Fame honorees. The White Rose Circle of Friends is reserved for those who have given between $1,000 and $1,999. We are thrilled to have the support of these chapters who have catapulted our mission to the next level, honoring the tradition of yesterday and the vision of tomorrow. Congratulations and thank you, White Rose Circle of Friends. White Rose Circle of Friends honorees include in the Eastern Area International Trends and Services Facet, Chapters Arlington, Virginia Chapter. The Arlington, Virginia Chapter was the first chapter to donate to our mission. Essex County, New Jersey Chapter. Old Dominion, Virginia chapter, Patuxent River, Maryland chapter. And now back to you, Madam Director, to continue our ceremony. Thank you, Link Connie. And now, the drum roll, please. We acknowledge our Emerald Society members. This is a distinguished group of individuals whose outstanding generosity demonstrates the theme of my administration, embracing our legacy, cultivating our future. Together, this society has contributed a combined total of $21,000. That's 50% of the total raised by the Eastern area. I know that sound I am hearing is thunderous applause and I join you. Let's meet these esteemed honorees. Our chapters, Dr. Evelyn L. Kearney, President, Buffalo, New York chapter. Robin H. Williams, President, Greater Hudson Valley, New York chapter. Our individual donors, 
Dr. Cynthia Jacobs Carter, Old Dominion, Virginia chapter. Dr. Constance Moss, Buffalo, New York chapter. Dr. Wilma Michaud, Dover, Delaware chapter and immediate past president of Delaware State University and chapter president of the Dover chapter. Rhonda Starks Crowder and Dr. Kermit P. Crowder, Wilmington, Delaware chapter. Rhoda McKinney Jones and Sam H. Jones Jr., Pentown, Pennsylvania chapter. Patricia Russell McLeod Esquire, Dogwood City, Georgia chapter and 11th national president of the Lynx Incorporated. Dr. Shawana Tucker Sims, Waterbury, Connecticut chapter. Fatima Gamble, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania chapter. Dr. Marcella Maxwell, Greater New York, New York chapter. Bishop, AME University and Monrovia College have planned a very endearing dedication ceremony in honor of all donors. Can you please share with us what you've been up to? Bishop, you're on Bishop, mute. You have to unmute. I apologize. We are delighted to announce that we have, we are having constructed two um, very lovely uh, donor cases. Uh, Link Rhonda Crowder has provided us the appropriate gr green color for the background and your name plates are being provided uh, in three by two inch uh, gold plates that will go inside each one. And two of the, one of the cabinets will go on the Monrovia College campus on the third floor in the lobby. And the second will go on the AME University campus in the Bishop C. Garnett Henning uh, building on the third floor in the lobby. And there is room for many more donors in this cabinet, in these cabinets. And if we need to construct more, we will do that. The link symbol that you see projected on the side of Amy, on the side of Eliza Turner Church behind our pictures will also be at the top with the area director's name. Um, these names, we are grateful. All of the names that were announced in this category will be placed on the plaques and they will go in the donor wall cabinets in those two locations. Thank you very much, Madam Director. We are grateful. Thank you, Bishop. Now we've been keeping a bit of a secret. In addition to your virtual presence at AME Monrovia, each Emerald Society member will also be receiving an engraved crystal award. The swirling green interior of the award symbolizes the Link's energy and commitment to service encased in clear crystal so that the light of our good works can shine. We also have a few more extra special announcements this evening. Our Eastern Area Program theme is Collaborate, Communicate, and Celebrate. Led by our coordinator, Rhonda Starks Crowder, we are always striving to acknowledge and celebrate those who go the extra mile. This evening, we have two people who have gone above and beyond that we would like to celebrate. The first is Fatima Gamble of the Philadelphia, Pennsylvania chapter. Fatima's monetary donation and gift of 20 laptop computers was incredibly timely. Those laptops not only serve students on campus, but also enabled remote learning, which is critically important during this time of quarantine. Our students in Africa have a special message for you, Link Fatima. Listen closely. Welcome to Mrs. Fatima Gamble Computer Lab. My name is Jackson P. Bami, Interim President of the Moira College and Industrial Training School. I'm grateful to, uh, to the leadership of the 14th Episcopal District, Bishop McLeod and Supervisor Patricia Russell McLeod for the opportunity given me to serve as the Interim President of this great school. We're also grateful to Mrs. Fatima Gamble 
for the provision of computers to set up this unique computer lab for the Moira College students. We remain grateful and we hope she will continue to partner with the Moira College in making sure we receive more do uh, donations of computer to enable all of our students, a specific class, to come to this lab at once. Instead, because currently we have uh, less than 25 computer, 30 computers here available, and some of the classes we have up to uh, 50 students. So the more computers available, the more we can expand the lab and get all of the students coming to the lab at the same time. So Mrs. Gambo, thank you so much. The student of, of Morva College and the administration, I appreciate you for this gesture. Continue the good work. Only God will pay you back. Thank you so much. And thank you to the leadership once more for the opportunity and for the provision of, of these materials. Thank you. Adama, you now have a computer laboratory in AME University, Liberia, dedicated in your name. Would you like to share a few words with us? Oh, it's hard for me to speak now because I am completely overwhelmed and I, I'm, I'm tearing now. And um, yeah, I am so humbly grateful um, for the recognition. You know, I, I constantly remind myself that to whom much is given, much is expected whether it's doing what I can to improve the lives and opportunities of our brothers and sisters in Africa, or for those who are here in America. I, I'm, I'm merely a servant. I'm just a servant of God, first and foremost. Then my family, my community, my chapter, and to the Lynx Incorporated. And you know, I'm just a vessel that which is charged with providing whatever I can to those who are in need, be it students who attend the schools we manage here in Philadelphia or for those students who reside in our motherland. Having traveled to Africa, I've, been, I, I've seen firsthand how much the students value education. They realize that education is the doorway to to success. And we here in America are truly, truly blessed. Our primary schools are free for the most part. Our schools are equipped with books, pencils, pens, papers, lab equipment, and school buses to take us to and from to our homes. And as I know that many of the students in Africa, they have to walk miles to get to their schools. And it's not always the case in schools outside of our, our country where they don't have all the supplies that we have. Whatever I can do to improve lives, to provide hope to those who are less fortunate than myself, I am dedicated to doing so. And, and let me thank Link Rhonda for being in the right place at the right time for following up with me when I mentioned to her that I had heeded the call made on last year's Education Across the Miles webinar. By, they were requesting supplies for a school in Monrovia, Liberia. It was at that Philadelphia's Mayor's Mask Ball to benefit HBCUs where she and I connected. And here we are now once again, and I am here to uh, provide whatever I can for the schools in Liberia. Again, you humble me with this honor and I cannot thank you enough. So I just say God bless and stay in peace. Thank you, Link Fatima. Our next honoree, Dr. Marcella Maxwell, Chair of Eastern Area Platinum and Alumna Affairs Committee. Link Marcella, this next presentation is especially for you. My name is Jackson P. Bami. 
interim president of the Morrow College and Industrial Training School. I'm firstly grateful to Bishop McLeod and Supervisor Patricia Russell uh, McLeod for the opportunity given me to serve as the interim president of this great school. Our school is usually, a, is usually considered right of passage into adulthood, post-secondary education as well as corporate work. It is usually a developmental stage where students begin to find independence, evaluate their strength, skill, and abilities. Due to the civil unrest and global economic constraints, we over the years have not been able to provide students here at Moira College and Industrial Training School the tools that will facilitate learning experience that is on par with other in our global village. Toward this end, the Moira College is grateful to Dr. Marcella Maswell of Links Incorporated for her extraordinary support for the construction of a modern STEM lab, which now conforms to the standard prescribed by the Ministry of Education Republic of Liberia. This lab, once equipped, will tremendously boost our effort to improve the learning process and promote academic, career, social, and emotional development of each student. In that, it will be helpful. It will help us harness student innovative abilities. It will be leveraged to ensure that students make transfer of material acquired in their classroom to real life situations. Adequately prepare them for areas in the sciences and information technology. I promise you all, the leadership of the 14th Episcopal District, Bishop McLeod and Supervisor McLeod, Dr. Maxwell and the Lynx Incorporated family, that this lab will build me team. And we also hope and pray that the Lynx Incorporated will continue to partner with the Moravia College in supporting the learning of our students here in the 14th District here in Liberia. We are open to suggestions as to how we could also be a conduit for other students across Liberia to experience this level of opportunity being provided for the over 150 students that enroll annually at the Moravia College. Thank you to the Links Incorporated. Thank you to the 14th Episcopal District leadership. Chagoli Shax, senior and student at the Monrovia College Industrial Training School. We as students at this college were grateful for the help given unto us from the Link Incorporated. It's a privilege to be in high school and be given this opportunity to not just do theories, but to be able to practicalize what we've learned in the classroom and make it more realistic unto us. We are grateful to Dr. Maxwell for your help given unto us. And we promise not just to learn these skills, but to use them in our lives. We promise and thanks also, because some of us are going in the science field. And with this knowledge at this early age being given unto us, it will enhance us to have a better status in the college to come. Thank you. I'm Sally Longoni from the Model College of Education to the School, Senior Science Class. I want to take this time to appreciate Ms. Ruya for her hard work and for giving us this opportunity to be able to use this science lab. Her immense contribution to what this science lab is going to help us quickly. We are going to use this science lab for the benefits of these students that want to venture into the science field. It's going to help us and enable us to be able to achieve our goals and our dreams, our doctors, and etc. We also want to appreciate Links Incorporated for their support to Mrs. Rhoda Carroll. Thank you. Dr. Maxwell, you now have a STEAM laboratory dedicated in your name at Monrovia College in Liberia. At this time, would you briefly like to share a few words with us? Yes, I would. I would like to thank God for making it possible for me to work at Medgar Evers College here in New York City and for enabling me to learn so many skills, organizational administration, so that I can now share them across the miles to Monrovia, Liberia. And I will follow up 
with another contribution because education, elevation, and empowerment is my mission in life. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Maxwell. And before we conclude our donor wall ceremony, I cannot allow this moment to pass us by without recognizing one more individual, for without him, our mission would not be possible. Bishop Earl McLeod Jr., you are quite the force that conscientiously avoids the limelight in order to let others shine. We appreciate all the work that you have done on the home front and across the miles. We thank you for your confidence in the Eastern area and for partnering with us on this incredible mission. On this day, on behalf of the Eastern Area members and friends, we present you with this painting by Ted Ellis, appropriately titled, Keep the Dream Alive. According to the artist, the original was created in 1994 to depict the future progression of African-Americans through education. He stated, education is paramount to our upward mobility and sustainable growth of our communities. Through education, we have impacted every field of study, the sciences, aeronautics, economics, technology, religion, law, and the arts. Our intellectual capital has been one of our greatest strengths and contributions to the academic and cultural landscape of America. We must ensure that we keep the dream alive. Thank you, Bishop for making our mission possible and keeping the dream alive. Uh, Lake Rhonda, is this where I say thank you? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> thank you, Madam. That's what's on thank your heart. You. Thank you, Madam Director. I grew up poor in Alabama, but my single mother did not make us ever feel poor. One Sunday, she called an AME preacher to come by her house and pick who picked me up and took me to college that day, up to Tuskegee. And she said to him, and many folk thought Ray Charles's mother was the first who said, Go, take, go on up there and see what they can do for you. She said that in 1969, and this preacher dropped me off at Tuskegee. I had not applied or anything. So my life for a few days was kind of in, in a little dismay. But I'm grateful because I, I learned a lot of things. We talked tonight about the digital divide in Africa, it's not digital, it's just a flat out divide. And I wanna thank you for the pre personal presentation. And I wanna thank all of the ladies who follow you in this wonderful program on behalf of the children that we serve in West Africa and in South Africa. May God bless you. Thank you, Bishop. Sister Links and supporters, I must admit that my heart is full as we come to the conclusion of this very special evening. It is always gratifying to see a vision become a reality and even more so to see how lives are being touched because of the generosity of those who have gathered this evening and those who have contributed but could not join us. Over one year ago, we started out with a vision for making a difference by extending our chain of friendship and service to the continent of Africa. We specifically wanted to help equip West Africa to participate in the global economy of the 21st century by helping students acquire critical skills in science, technology, arts, engineering, and math. STEAM skills are the currency of the new world order. And those who are not fluent and these skills are at risk of being left out and left behind. Links and supporters across the Eastern area answered the call to help and turned education across the miles into mission possible. 
I would like to thank the Eastern Area International Trends and Services Chair, Cynthia Jacobs Carter and Co-Chair Constance Moss, along with Eastern Area Program Coordinator, Rhonda Starks Crowder for their leadership, commitment and hard work to coordinate this important initiative and this evening celebration. A special thanks to Patricia Russell McLeod Esquire, our 11th National President of the Lynx Incorporated and Bishop E. Earl McLeod Jr., Presiding Bishop of the 14th and 19th Episcopal Districts for the African Methodist Episcopal Church for their selfless contributions, support, and encouragement with this project. In addition, I'd like to acknowledge Joshua Green of Inner Circle Pictures who produced our videos, Cyrus Barshu, CEO of Liberian Shipping Lines. And finally, I want to invite you to join us for a mission trip to Liberia and Ghana in 2022 to see the labs and meet the students that we have the privilege of serving. It will be an exciting cultural exchange as we learn more about ways we can support opportunity through academic excellence. The specific timing of the trip will depend upon the progression of the pandemic. We will keep you posted. One of my favorite quotes is, learn from yesterday, live for today, and hope for tomorrow. To me, that sums up what education across the miles is all about. We've learned that we must equip communities of color to participate in emerging opportunities. We are working in the present to make that happen, all in the hope of a better and brighter tomorrow for us all. Thank you for your generosity. We are transforming the today and the tomorrow for a generation of African scholars. Thanks for your presence this evening. May God bless you. And I will now turn it over to Bishop McLeod and Sister Pat, who will close us out this evening. Well, I usually go first, so I'll do that uh, again. Thank you so much for everything. Our vision, we did not have children of our own, so we've been investing in other children uh, for now 39, 38 or 39 years. And we, 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 we are grateful. We invest in college students here in America. We invest in the students my wife talked about from Togo and Benin and from Sierra Leone. We invest in our families, children and, and, and people we don't know. And I think many of you are doing the same thing. Um, as we have, our final plan of work for the AME Church is to build a new school for these children at Monrovia College on Benson Street in downtown Monrovia. I, Madam Director, I'm going to provide an opportunity with the new Bishop of the 14th District whenever we have a general conference that you will become a partner with them, with me. And uh, we, we, are, we are designing that building now. I expect it's gonna cost about $2 million and I'd like you all to be a part of that. It will not be named after me or my wife but I sure hope it has a link color on it somewhere. Thank you very much and may God bless you and the ladies who follow you. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop. And thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Shawana Tucker-Sims to the International Trends and Services facet led by our team of willing workers, visionaries, trailblazers, and those who empowered students. So you heard the students and that's the biggest thank you because they said, we want to appreciate the links incorporated. We want to thank the Eastern area. We want to thank the Emeralds who gave laboratories for us to make it testable, doable, and so I'll close with Burton Braley, who said this, if you want a thing bad enough to go out and fight for it, to work day and night for it, to give your time and your peace and your sleep for it, if gladly you'll sweat for it and fret for it and plan for it, if you'll simply go after that thing that you want 
with all of your capacity, strength and sagacity, faith, hope and confidence and stern personacity, if neither cold nor famine nor gaunt, nor sickness nor pain or body or brain, if none of those things can keep you away from that thing that you want, if dogged and grim, you will besiege and beset it. Surely you will get it. Go for it. Eastern area of the Lynx Incorporated, education across the miles, mission possible. Thank you. Thank you, Link Pat. We have five minutes left. And at this time, my sisters and guests, if you have any questions, you may place them in the chat box at this time. We have a question, uh, Madam Director. Is it possible to make computer donations or money for computers to AME University? So are we in the business of taking money at this time? Donations can be made through the Eastern Area PayPal account. We are still accepting uh, those donations. And our tech chair has just put in the chat box the ways that you may still contribute to our work in Monrovia, Liberia with our school. So yes, we are accepting donations and we are accepting funds for the sustainability of our program. Perfect, thank you. Another question, additionally, if local chapters could obtain funding from a local hospital to help equip a lab, who would I talk to? You can contact myself and you can also contact Link Rhonda, our program coordinator, as we work very closely together on in-kind donations, uh, then to assure that those donations are cataloged and then prepared for shipping to the site of the schools in Monrovia. So please feel free to contact either one of us. Thank you. This question is for Bishop. Bishop, how were you able to maintain the security of such high value items when we hear of the horror stories of theft in Africa? Uh, right now, AME University and Monrovia College are on the same campus. And on the college campus, we have a, a fairly large security staff that works 24 hours a day because we have right at, since the pandemic, 3,500 to 3,700 students at AME University. And we have uh, the 147 students at Monrovia College. So our security team, once we secure the items from Cyrus's warehouse, we put them in a, in a warehouse at, on the campus of AME University and the university maintains them until we're ready to, to move them out of the lab. I should say too, while we're talking that Marcella Maxwell's lab is on the third floor of the Henning building. Ms. Gamble's computer lab is in the building that's right behind you, the white AME University building behind you and uh, they are two separate places, but on the same side of the street and the church is in between them. Perfect. Okay. Uh, this one is for, this question is for Attorney Pat. Attorney Pat, you mentioned a coding initiative in partnership with Tennessee State University. What are the needs? How do we support? Where do we give? How much is needed? The memorandum of understanding is being signed in May. We are in the embryonic stages. Uh, so I can't give you a firm figure. I think if you will leave your name in the chat and uh, we invited and she attended, uh, Link Rhonda Crowder was a part of the ideation, the thought leadership, because we are not interested in transactional we are interested in transformational. And that means that 
intimately and intricately, Dr. Shawana Tucker Sims and Rhonda Crowder and ITS will be in lockstep with all efforts. So if we have the name, we will have the outreach so that the manifestation of the working together concept. Bishop McLeod has taught our people across the fabric of our supervision that we are better together. And that's tran that transference is our ideology that companions this initiative. Perfect, thank you. And I do want to let you know that I guess um, some of our friends from our first Green Table Talk are still with us because they're texting me pledges at this point. And I had not uh, uh, opened the doors to the church, but I certainly will. And we do have a first pledge of $1,000, $1,000 from uh, Beverly Ledbetter, who is our Eastern Area Ethics and Standards Chair. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Beverly let better. Okay, let me see if we have any other. Okay, we do have another question. How can other organizations conducting programs in Liberia connect with AME? Um, uh, Bishop, can you take that one? Yes. Um, I'm, I will provide my email address and my telephone number in the chat. And uh, depending on what people want to do, because the AME Church is a pretty large organization, we may, I'll be able to direct them to whatever area they want to be directed in because we have lots of programs. For example, the Apple computer coding classes that, were be, that are gonna begin in the fall of this year, both at AME University, Monrovia College, and Wilberforce Com uh, Community College in the Republic of South Africa, where we have responsibility as well. So it just depends on where they wanna go. We have lots of presence in the Caribbean and in Southern Africa. So I'll, I'll be able to direct them and I'll provide my information in the chat now. And you, okay. can, you should feel free to provide it to as well. I will do so, thank you. I know that we are running quickly out of time, but I do wanna get in this other uh, text that I just received. And that is from Dr. Joan Coker of the Wilmington, Delaware chapter has pledged $1,000 toward mission two. So thank you, Dr. Coker, my chapter president for stepping up and being such a wonderful part and support of all that we do in the Eastern area. Thank you. I am just taking a quick peek in the final minute or so of the chat. I think we pretty much, we're getting lots of questions regarding how can we support. And I think that we have uh, covered that piece. You know that you can, there are three ways to give and we are moving towards mission two. Uh, the first was ensuring infrastructure was in place. You've seen uh, the magic of that moment. And so the second phase of work will actually be tangible, hands-on, programming beginning with coding. So now we're moving forward with uh, on, our pro on our project plan. So thank you, we will be in touch. If you have questions, you can reach out to me at ealinksprogram at gmail.com. Madam Director. Thank you, Link Rhonda. And I do see that there is another message in the chat box. We have Link Felisa Van Lu of Raritan Valley Chapter who has pledged $1,000. Thank you, Link Felisa for your contribution. And friends and guests, as we come to a close this evening, I thank you so much for joining us. I thank you for being a part of this journey with us to impact lives. Please continue to join with us as we move into phase two of our work with education across the miles, sustainability, and now infusion of programming will be key. Wishing you all health, wealth, safety, good evening, and God bless. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all.